it's uh, Saturday morning it's about quarter past nine and it's minus two degrees up at the caravan storage so uh, I've come up to just obviously check the caravan as I do every other few weeks but also just to do a couple of jobs um, as you can see we've got a caravan cover on and I did um, quite a bit of looking into this whether you should or you shouldn't put a caravan cover on and um, a lot of people said it does cause damp inside the caravan it doesn't let the caravan breathe but um, the reason why we bought the cover is uh, just a couple of years ago we had a little bit of water ingress on the uh, on the right uh, on the rear um, near side corner and it was coming up to winter and I thought that you know to get it repaired and the best thing to do was to cover it for, for the winter so we bought the caravan cover I got it from uh, Amazon it was a Maypole one and it was about um, I think it was about 110 pounds um, so we brought it up and we put it on. Uh, putting it on is quite easy. Uh, the way that I do it, I have some retractable ladders and I climb up onto the side of the roof, put the caravan cover on top of the roof and then open it on the roof and then pull it around the caravan. Um, and so far, it's, it seems to be, be okay. Um, I put the straps, obviously, um, I put them through the legs um, so that just helps you know, that it doesn't blow off anywhere. It is a little bit too big for our van, as you can see. I got the uh, the 19 to 21 foot one, but it does work okay. It's fully breathable. So I'm just going to show you how, how um, you can access the, the caravan with the cover on. It's not got a door access in it. It's got zips at the front, which I'll show you, which is quite easy. Uh, and I'll just show you a little fault that I've found this morning when I've arrived. So the cover, the straps just go underneath the caravan and as you can see there, they just like um, come through and you just pull that round um, and at the front it goes all the way down the caravan and we just zip that up and you can just open the, uh, the front of the cover, there's also one at the back as well. Now obviously I've got here this morning and disaster has struck and uh, we have a I don't know if you can see it at the top there we have a tear in the uh, in the cover so at the moment I'm not sure what my plan is I might actually take the cover off today just to get that home and get that repaired and um, because I don't want that ripping any further and causing further problems which is uh, we've had it for a few years and it's been really good but I'm quite uh, it's just caught on the um, the outlet for the um, the fire. So during winter we put the caravan up on axle stands and uh, it just helps protect the tyres so there's no load weight bearing on the tyres. Uh, it's vitally important when you're doing that that you actually hook your, your tow car up to the caravan uh, before you jack it up um, because if you, if you don't you're going to get some uh, probably some weight transfer and the, the caravan may tip up so uh, even when you're taking off the axle stands as well it's vitally important you must put the uh, the hit the tow car on the vehicle one one of the other things i do uh, is with the 13 pin uh, electrics i also put some vaseline around the pins it just helps protect them in this cold weather when you're jacking your caravan though i looked at advice on that and you should always put your jack underneath the axle or if you've got the the alco jack mount you can put them on then or the metal plate just near the axle uh, you should never actually jack your van up on the actual frame itself you could possibly twist the frame so i'm just going to show you those points as well where i jack it up from and also where um, i put my axle stands so i don't know whether you can see there you can actually see the axle stand is actually on the axle and just to the right of that is where i use to mount or to put the jack to jack it up and you can see the other axle stand just on the other side the two ton each for those axle jacks so it's quite ample to hold the weight of the van okay so you join me 10 minutes later after I said I was going to go in the caravan and as you can see I've actually decided to take the caravan cover off I didn't want that getting any worse than where it was and when we store our caravan it is quite open to the elements um, I had to be slightly inventive because I haven't brought my ladders with me to get the uh, the, the cover off so I actually used the, the tripod for the camera uh, extended and used that to push the, um, the cover over and uh, it worked 
but it was hard work so now we'll go into the caravan and i'm actually going to put the heating on because it's uh now i've taken the cover off let's get some warmth in there so we're inside the caravan now i've just got the heating on so it's going to be warm soon hopefully uh, i'm just going to show you some of the things that we do in winter just to help the air get around the caravan to keep the the moisture down and make sure everything is okay so in the front of the van you'll see uh, it is quite a bit of a mess because this is what just what i've read up on we we make sure all the uh, the, the cushions are off the seat and we just pile them up so air can get through the bottom of the benches um, and we open all the cupboard doors as well it just lets the air circulate through I know I have come up sometimes when I first started caravanning and um, I did leave the doors shut and when I came up and opened the doors, the, the amount of cold air that was inside the cupboards was quite surprising, really. So since then, and reading up on it, we, we tend to leave all the doors open. There is a little bit of a downside of it, because when we start coming to use a caravan again, our first trip out in the van is normally Easter. The doors, have, as you can see on this one, I don't know what you can see, they do slightly um, move and warp a little bit. But obviously, as, as the van gets warmer, they, they do seem to fit back in place. The only one that I've had an issue with is actually the um, the door into the into the bathroom, uh, which has has warped a little bit, and it's never gone right. So in in the back of the van, it's a fixed bed, as I say, and we always leave the bed up, let the air circulate through there. And leave all the uh, the cupboard doors open in the back just to make sure that the air circulates through and this is the door that um, it, it's one of these flimsy doors and it's I don't think you can see that on the camera but it is actually warped a little bit you can just see it's beveled out here a little bit and in the summer when it's a little bit warm it does go straight but it, it doesn't seem to be completely straight and then that's the the bathroom uh another good tip that i found with um storing it in winter is when you when you uh put your toilet cassette back in is to make sure that you put a bit of vaseline on your on your cassette just around the seals and also leave it open so the, obviously the catch at the back um the toilet flush you just leave that open it stops the seals getting dry stops and sticking i also have these uh dehumidifiers in there uh, i can't remember what they call they're quite big ones and um they're really good though there's, there's a guy who stores his van just across the way and he, he was tell, telling me about them and i bought two of those so i'll keep one of them at the back and i put one uh at the front of the van and it seems to take quite a bit of a bit of moisture there's not a great deal of water in it as you can see but it does take some of it out. uh we keep obviously keep the fridge door open and i found obviously that the the freezer needs to stay open and i found this ingenious idea of putting a plastic pipe pot to wedge the door open there and it just seems to work we normally fold the chairs up and put them under the bed but we found that there was little bits of mold going on them during the winter so what we do is we put them inside the van and we open them out like that so there's lots of air getting through the van Another thing I do like to check is uh, the damp in the vehicle and I have a damp meter which I bought off Amazon. It was only about £20 or so, uh, but I'm a bit unsure as to how accurate they are. With any caravan, I think there's always going to be some sort of moisture within the van. So with within the readings, normally uh, at the size of the van, I'm something around about anything between 10 and 11%. In the winter months, it does go up a little bit. So i'm a bit dubious about the actual damp meters themselves um, i do think that the van does hold a little bit of moisture in it anyway with the battery in the caravan i do take it out over the winter months and take that home and just charge it up every now and again just put it on a trickle charge i have thought about getting a solar panel um, just to keep that charged up but with with us having the cover on uh, i couldn't really put it outside the van so um, 
I'd probably look at getting one, one of those for the summer months, but uh, it, it won't be useful to us during the winter. So that's the kind of things that we do in the winter with our caravan, just to make sure that it, it stays nice and uh, dry and not too damp. Uh, I'm just going to go outside. Uh, I talked a little bit about a, wa a bit of water ingress that we got, uh, I think it was two years ago. So I'm just going to show you what we uh, we found and what we had done with that. So we had a little bit of water ingress in the back corner, just coming down, down this wall here uh, on the inside. And I, I checked everything. I actually took um, the toilet locker door off and replaced that and resealed it. The the water inlet for the for the um, the, sh the toilet I took that off and redid that, and th there was still getting a little bit of water in. So what we did is we took it to uh, a guy who's just at the bottom of our storage place called Ian Pennington, and we had the the awning rail resealed all the way up, and when he was doing it, he found that in the top corner, just where it goes around the bend there there was a little tiny crack in the plastic so he's taken that out uh, and replaced it and also on the top of the van the line that joins the back panel to the roof he took all that off and replaced that and he resealed the toilet skylight which has seemed to have done the problem now another possible area that it came from was the marker light there I took the marker light off and there was a little hole where the cable went through so I filled that as well and that seems to have solved the problem so looking at our caravan it's a 2006 Luna Quasar EB it's 12 years old now uh, but I think we do look after it quite well I've done quite a few jobs to it I'm just gonna uh, just show you around the front and the outside of the van I think it stands at about 21 foot the total length of it we've got an uh, external gas point an electric point which is really good when we've got the awning on the wet locker at the front obviously in the normal front locker which is uh, I managed to get in this to put my waste master in there which fit quite nicely and all my waste and water pipes in there down the side you've got the battery box and the water inlet and this is a, an aerial point that was already on the van which is quite good you can plug and we go to a lot of sites where you have aerial sockets you can just plug it directly into there rather than putting a wire through your window on your van um, now I've taken the cover off I'll probably consider getting some winter covers on the uh, on the grills there to make sure that it's not too damp with inside the van this cupboard here is my um, just open this up this is my bits cupboard which stores all my cleaning products needs a bit of a tidy up that it's a bit of a mess I also have a spare hookup cable as well and um, two cables there for when we're in European sites France and one's reverse polarity which I'll talk about at some other point um, what we do find quite handy is the underbed store. This is the underbed storage which is accessed from outside, which is quite useful. Oh, there's my daughter's scooter. I've been looking for that. Didn't realise that was there. So that's quite big. We get everything in there. Really good storage facility. A couple of little jobs that I've done inside the van is uh, obviously these days everybody has USB, so I fitted a, a couple of USB. Um, sockets one at the back of the van and I've got one at the front near the radio I just took that one off the lighting circuit and the one at the front just off the radio uh, another little job that I've done is there was a single socket there's never enough sockets there was a single socket there so I changed that and I put a, um, a two gang socket in with USB uh, on there as well the other USB socket is just you can see there it's just underneath the radio there is one downside to these and when I fitted them I thought they looked okay but I don't know what you can see if I just take this cover off there's an actual blue light that shines that's that's wired into the socket um, they look quite good when I bought them but actually at night they're actually quite bright 
so um we we don't tend to use them at night we tend to cover them up because for me they're just a little bit too bright so i may consider changing them to take the the leds out so that um it's not as bright so that's just a little view of what we do with our caravan in the winter as i say i'm not an expert i'm just looking what everybody else does and seeing whether it works for me and so far the way that we're storing the caravan at winter the way that we open the cupboards and the way that we put the, the seats and the benches and everything in the van works quite well we've not had any problems so um thank you very much for watching please click like and subscribe and we'll see you soon with another video bye bye